All right, guys, I'm Rabir. And I'm Matt. And this is Sounds Like on Anderton's TV. <laughs> So, it sounds like again, who are we going to sound like today, my It's boy? going to be a challenging one today, and this is going to be, uh, sound like Zach Wild. Zachary Wildeth. So, I'm just going to say this now, I am nowhere near as good as Zach Wild, and I most certainly can't play as well as Zach Wild. Either way, I'm going to give it my best shot. Good. Well, we're going to give it a go, aren't we? We are. So, Zach Wild, as most of you probably know, is the guitar player of Ozzy Osbourne, Black Label Society, and mm. a load of solo stuff, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, been around a while, so there's a bunch of tones to kind of get, but he does have quite a distinctive sound, doesn't he? He does. He's most famous for using his crazy uh, Gibson Les Paul with the... Uh, it's the bullseye. Yeah, it's the bullseye with mm. the black and white. Uh, and then moving to, there was a cross between a V and an SG shape, mm. which was a guitar. And then he also is famous for using JCM 800s, and then he had his own Zach Wild version, the MG stuff, and now he's doing Wild Audio. Yeah, he's got Wild Audio guitars and amps. Yeah. But so I think he's playing all the guitars, obviously, it's a bit of a motion, but yeah. he did have a SIG from Gibson, which mm -hmm. is n now discontinued. Um, so yeah, I think... Where, and it's EMGs as well. EMG, he yeah. has his own signature set of EMGs. So, so I, think, I think we'll be hard pressed to find a Gibson Les Paul or Epiphone Les Paul with EMGs in stock here. Yeah. So we might have a look at LTDs, we might yeah. have a look at something else, but we'll see what we can do. We will. Marshally stuff, uh, MXR, we need to use yeah. WAS, MXR uh, Chorus, he's a got, super he's distortion. Got, he's got his own range of MXR gear as well. Yeah. Um, so well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Let's, let's see do it. what we can find. Let's get wild. <laughs> So we were looking for, ideally, an Epiphone with EMGs, mm -hmm. uh, an Epiphone Les Paul, uh, in a Zach Wild style. And um, we have found one, but it's not in store, so we've ordered it in from the warehouse. And it's the same EMGs, the 81 and 85, that Zach Wild uses. So it's a Les Paul prophecy, I think. So Awesome. Well, that will arrive in due course. And until then, we should find an amplifier. So you know how we made a pact that we wouldn't... It did. It wasn't, it wasn't a blood pact, I don't think. It, it wasn't was a blood pact, but we said we wouldn't go near the DSL. And there might not be any in stock, but basically, Zach Wilde used Marshall for so long. It was always famously JCM 800s and modded 800s yeah, and this, yeah. that, and the other. So we need to find something like that. So the best bang for your buck is a DSL 40. Yeah. If they've got one... You don't really get much Marshall for our budget. No. For, so... Well, let's see what was there. Let's see what's there. Yeah. So as you know by now, the DSL40 comes in a bunch of different finishes, but essentially it's the same amp, um, and it's £600. It's such a good price. It's, which is really good, and as you know by now, where £1,500 pounds is our budget, um, the guitar that we've just picked is about 450 so coupled with a DSL, should we go for a DSL, mm. would be about... 1050 giving us 450 for pedals and we do have quite a few pedals yeah there's at least two stomp boxes and a wire pedal so yeah. that's roughly around three four hundred quid mark anyway so the options really are we've got the dsl there's the agnator tweaker there is the black star ht the club 40 or the ht 20 yeah or ht 60 depending on the thing is i mean i know we said we wouldn't use a dsl 40 but we i think people might hate this I think we were more saying that we wouldn't use it for every video. Yeah. But I think it's really tough when an artist is so associated with a brand and a sound. If you have the option, yeah. why wouldn't we go? With that logic, Matthew, I'd say we should get a DSL-40C. So we found ourselves in the land of NXR. Um, I think he used, uh, Zach used uh, Boss pedals for quite a long time. Yeah, for a while. But now, for a wild. But now he has a bunch of signature MXR gear, um, so we'd be stupid not to have a look at it. There's the Berserker Overdrive, there's a phaser like based on the Phase 90 and a chorus. Um, well, I'd say what I think we'll do best at is wah, chorus, overdrive. Yes, I agree. And with that logic, why not get the Berserker? Yep. Why not get the Black Label Chorus? 
and then we'll use the either the Jimi Hendrix wire because I know he's used that for a lot of gigs and stuff like that. I've seen on rig rundowns. We could just go with the standard Dunlop crybaby. We could, but he uses the Hendrix wire. Well, okay, in that case, let's. How much are they? The Hendrix wire is a non-disclosed amount of money. How much is the Hendrix wire? One hundred and ten. Yeah, but standard one, sixty, seventy. So. Oh, you've got enough money. Yeah, why, why are we deliberating them? Oh, because I love you. <laughs> I love you too, man. I love you too. I love you too. Oh. 109 99 99 99 99 Yeah, 99 So the guitar is about, what, 450? Mm-hmm. The amp, the DSR40 is 600. Mm -hmm. So that is about 1,050. Yep. The overdrive about 93, I think, plus the chorus is about 92, which wow. is 185, which tells us up to about 1,235 pounds. Plus the Jimi Hendrix wire, which is 109.99. So that is about 1,450 quid. Which is pretty much bang on what we need. We've got all the gear we need and we have stayed 50 pounds under budget. And I think the good thing about all this gear is that We've got the, the wah, the chorus, and the overdrive that he uses. Mm. We've got an amp by the same brand, and we've got a guitar with the pickups he uses in them. Well, it's a good job MXR make a load of his signature gear. Okay, cool, yeah, no worries. All right, I'll speak to you later. Should we go somewhere that well? Let's do it. Hey guys, back in the video room. Back in the video room. <laughs> we are indeed we in, are. Our, in our mission to sound like Zach Wilde today. And it has been a mission, I would say. It has. It's, to be honest, I think we thought it would be easier than it was. It's this weird thing where, you, like, because he's a lead guitar player, very famous for his sound, to get that, it requires not only the same sort of gear, but the fingers as well and everything else yeah. goes into it. So it is pretty difficult when you're doing a lead guitarist, sounds like. Yeah. However, I think given that we are using certain bits of signature gear and then everything else is ballpark, I think we're not doing a bad job. No. But so, that's up to you guys. Yeah, so let us know what you think. But mm. let's run through the rig, shall we? Yeah. So this is the Epiphone Les Paul Custom Prophecy Plus. Which is beautiful. It is beautiful. Uh, this is like a trans black quilt top. Yeah. Um, we've used these this series of guitar before, but this is the first time we've used one with EMGs. And this has the 80. It's got an 8185 set by EMG, yeah. which Zach Wilde obviously is well known for having his own signature set of these. Yeah. So getting the combination of a Les Paul with these EMGs is great. And also the addition of, if you can whip it over, um, it has a well, like a matte finish neck. Um, Zach Wilde is also known for playing with unfinished necks, so yeah. this again gets us pretty close. I can definitely relate to the whole set and finish unfinished neck business because I prefer not having any kind of hard lacquer on the back of the neck. It's less slippy when you sweat. Yeah, and so it's nice. You also get a nice little yellow ribbon that flip stands out at the back there just for style. That's just a little bonus feature. Yeah, I think that's probably my favourite feature on the guitar. However, it's a solid guitar, and they always do this nice little perloid um, pot, you know, like volume knobs and tone knobs and stuff. Mm. And yeah, it's solid. Feels really solid. Cool. So there's the guitar. That's a guitar. We're running straight into the trusty old, can you believe we have it back in the room, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Marshall DSL-4EC. Yeah. It's doing, to be honest, it, do, it works. It's He's got such a... Well, he uh, uses the JCM 800, doesn't he? Exactly. And you can't really get any closer for our budget than this. No. So. Actually, we will say, he, wild audio is what he's using now for both guitars and amplifiers. Yeah, but Anderton's, we're focusing on... Well, and Anderson's don't stock um, wild audio at this time. Yeah.
vintage look one. It's the same amp inside as the black one, the normal standard range, the yep. white one. Um, but it's nice amp, it does the job. It's easy to find the, the kind of tones you're after, provided they use the sort of British Marshall sound. Yep. Um, and we've been running it between both the both channels, clean for some riffs and then overdrive for other stuff. <laughs> Our Zach Wild signature series pedals. Yeah, well, we're, we're running straight into the wah, aren't we? Mm -hmm. On the floor from the guitar. So, yeah, first off, we've got the Jim Dunlop, Jimi Hendrix wah. Now he has his own wah, but at the time, for a long time, did he did use the Jimi Hendrix wah. So we thought we'd go with that. And that goes straight into the Berserk Overdrive by MXR, and that's another signature. It's got his signature kind of uh, the bullseye, the bullseye, bullseye on. logo on. And then right into the Black Label Chorus, which is another of his signature pedals. <laughs> Let's go through the signals here. If I take all pedals off and we just show you what the guitar is going straight into. Go clean? No, we'll just keep it on what it was to start with. So. Which, in fairness, is quite a thick sound as it is. Yeah, it sounds pretty fat. But as soon as you push the Berserker Overdrive in. Definitely near in the ballpark there. Yeah, and then th th so that does the job. It gets the sustain mm. and it gets the extra sort of aggressive sound around the high mids, high mid range. Yeah. So that's cool. Well, we so we've gone with the chorus, and I know he has a signature, but he's basically well known for double tracking mm. his guitars on record. So there's a kind of a natural chorus sound, and then he uses a chorus pedal live. Yeah. Um, which is why we've gone for that and why he has a signature. So should we? So if we play, I'll show you, so we'll play that. Like, it definitely, definitely gets that sound. It's just it? a, like a, a slow roll, so the rate's quite low. Mm. It's not like a mm, 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 you know. So, um... Like a what? <laughs> like a mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's, yeah, it's really, I mean, turn it up. Yeah. Because that's... <laughs> Yeah, it just so, wants to roll over the top there, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah, so it just gives you a nice little chorus effect. But um, then what's nice is we, 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 push the, we push the depth up, if I recall, and then we throw in the MXR, and then to get those, and then when you use the wah, you get the leads. I can't play like Zach Wilde, I'm just going to say that now. It's not bad at all though, not bad at all. <laughs> it's yeah. really quite difficult to play his, his kind of, all his licks are very, very picking heavy and I'm not into that personally, but... Yeah. Um, He's got a really... It's got, you, particularly with that, the, the chorus and the wah pedal, when you do those high bends and hold them, it gets that... It gets that Zach Wilde sound yeah. to me, to my ear, as, at least. I guess it's pretty close, I think. And if you're a fan of Zach Wilde and you do a lot of the same sort of picking pattern licks that he does, I can guarantee you'll be impressed with both couples. The MXR Black Label Chorus, along with the Wah pedal, will definitely get. In fact, the, both the MXR pedals and the Wah will get you pretty much there. Absolutely, yeah. And it's good to know that obviously he uses them, which is. Um yeah, also good. I think due to budget restraints, mm. we didn't go for the flanger or the roto... The roto vibe that he has on a pedal, vibe. yeah. Yeah, so we didn't go for those two, but we're, we're quite close to maxing out our £1,500 budget, so... We are indeed, Matthew. Anyway, 
That is how to sound like Zach Wilde on a budget of 1,500 English pounds. We really hope that you've enjoyed this particular video. Uh, we hope we got close. So we really want to know what you think because it w was pretty pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to let us know, leave that in the comment section below. And as usual, all of the links are in the description for all of the gear we've used. Um, so you can go and check that out too. Yes. And on that note, I've been Rabir. And I've been Matt. And this has certainly been Sounds Like on Andens TV. Certainly. Goodbye. <laughs>